this is what we're going afterwards. I'll tell you a little bit about life from the life of the vineyard so you get a, a flavor for it. Because I think some of you are thinking, oh, this is pretty cool, and that looks like a good idea because people are having fun and going back to supplies. There were a couple, couple of things that came across my desk, uh, and Rosie, you might want to pay attention to this. We had uh, ABC training, I'm alcohol beverage control. Mm -hmm. yeah. The government they controls alcohol. <laughs> and they gave us some training, and they gave us a memo. And I'm going to read uh, from the memo. Uh, it says, selling, serving, or allowing uh, alcohol to be sold uh, to a person under 21 or to an intoxicated person. Um, you know, is a misdemeanor offense and can result in a minimum $1,000 fine or imprisonment. And we all know that, and we don't want to serve alcohol to minors. And it goes on to say that um, a person serving alcohol, that is a winemaker who is serving alcohol at a tasting room, um, it is illegal for a, a person serving alcohol to consume alcoholic beverages while working. And it's a misdemeanor and can result in a minimum $1,000 fine and or jail time. Okay. And yeah. Take off, I, know. I, just, I have, I have yeah. the good sense not to I ask quit. a follow-up question to the <laughs> officer of the agency at that time, but for the record, since this is on film, I want you to know that whenever I'm working in the tasting room, I do not inhale. <laughs> <laughs> I do not inhale. <laughs> <laughs> Then, you know, after this wine tasting event the other day, I came home and I looked at my mail, and, and this was in it. And I don't know if you can see that, um, but it's actually a picture of an attractive, you know, looking leaf um, in the fall and showing some autumn, autumn colors. I said, boy, that, that looks just like the leaves on my vines. That's interesting. And this is a newsletter um, from, it's from the kind of the wine, the wine group in California. And they're saying, Here's the headline. Out of nowhere comes red blotch. So this red blotch is a disease. And that looks like my vines. <laughs> and you know, it just goes to tell you that in this farming business, there's always something. You know, so people, you know, want to know, well, why did you want to get into wine making? And actually it was never my name. And if you ask my wife, she would tell you, well, it's her dream. And that was always her idea. And, okay, so that's her right. idea. And so uh, we've basically been members of Belmont Green Winery since it started, uh, more than 10 years ago. And from time to time, um, actually about nine years ago, they were offering a course in how to make wine. And I said to my wife, well, let's go. You've always wanted to learn how to make wine. Let's, let's go. So we came, and uh, the course was taught by a gentleman named Lum Eisenman, and we thought, oh, this, is, this looks like we could do this. And one of the things that the teacher advises, he said, well, when you make wine, make a big batch. It's easier to work with, it's less likely to spoil. Um, you know, don't make a small batch, just, just get a big batch. Okay, so we called up this grower in Temecula. So, okay, I want to buy some grapes. And we ended up buying a half ton of grapes. <laughs> and we brought these back to our garage, and, you know, from that, then what are we doing? And so, we really had no idea what we were getting ourselves into. <laughs> but through the whole process and everything, we found out that making one barrel of wine, it's actually a lot of fun. And it's really not that much fun. You know, a couple of days, you know, during the year, weekend here and there. It's just not a big deal. But making 10 barrels of wine, it's a lot. It's not fun. I mean, we're, it's just not fun. Um, it's, it's like my punishment from God <laughs> for all of the sins that I've committed in 54 years and being married for more than 25 years. And it's the cross that I bear. And my poor wife, I mean, it was her dream. You know, to have this thing. And in her dream, she's wearing a white dress. <laughs> and she has a son. And she's kind of walking, you know, through the vineyard. <laughs> and below her, all the people are working. <laughs> and she's overseeing. 
And in her dream, she never thought for a minute that she'd be that person working in the dream. <laughs> and that's, I mean, it's no, that's her life. And she never, never thought about that. And it's, it's hard. I mean, and that's all. She's out there every day. And Karen talked about knitting, knitting the vines. Well, I remember about a year ago at this time, it was August and we had to net these vines. And it was getting hot. You know, it was 100 degrees. And you can see, you know, some of the pictures out there. And one of the things I've, I guess I've learned in life is kind of what these Europeans do, right? You get up, get up early in the morning, you know, work when it's cool out. Um, in the middle of the day, it's 100 degrees. It's time to come inside, have lunch, drink a little wine that we've been making, and have a siesta, and get up again at 4 or 5 o'clock, go back out to work. And so I've got some common sense, and it's midday, and I head inside. And I said to my wife, come on, why don't you come on inside? And she said, no, you go ahead. I want to stay out here. I want to finish. Well, in the vineyard work, the work is never finished. There's always something. I said, come on, it's okay, we can, we can get it done. And she said, no, it's, it's my vineyard. It's my dream. I'll come in when I want to. You go ahead, you know, you go rest, I'm going to finish. This is my vineyard. I said, what can I do about this woman? And so I go back inside, and I'm actually really concerned about her, because she just had gotten out of the hospital a month before that, and um, I came home one day from work a month before that, and she wasn't feeling well, so she'd been working outside, and I, she started gurgling, and she was unresponsive, called 911. Paramedics came, they took her to the hospital and followed her up. And I get to the hospital, and the paramedic says, his name's Joe, he says, uh, your wife's heart's stopped. On the way but it's okay. We, we took care of her. And, and she's fine. And she just was kind of bounding out of the air and was in the hospital. She's in there. Go find her. Okay. So I go in there and um, I hear later what the story is. I mean, for 15 minutes, CPR. And, well, anyway. She's okay. And a week later, she gets out of the hospital. You come home. And what's the first thing she does? She goes out and then. She starts to walk. The loops. And you just can't, you can't stop her from that. And what I realized is, like I think I mentioned before, I've been married for like 26 years. Right? Does anyone fight with this stuff? Yeah. But we, we do. And I realize the Lord just has to be loving this woman who is out there every single day among us. And um, I would say that this life in the vineyard has brought us closer to God. And um, it's, it's just really, it's quite good. I think we need another one. I'm going to pour the next one. Good. So the first one was probably one of the more bolder ones um, that we ever made. And um, the next one, Karen used this word, the European style. This is more of a European style. And you might have heard of something called a maritime, which is a type of language. It's fancy. It involves languages that are actually from the United States. And remember I mentioned with the Blue Merle Winery, and we have this Blue Merle Australian Shepherd. So this is our Merle Latouche. <laughs> and it came out, it came out. And uh, so I hope you it. It's very, it's easy to drink. Um, it's a 2009 vintage. It's got some bottle aged to this. I hope you enjoy that. So this is on that day, a year ago, we're out in the vineyard and she wouldn't come in. I got a phone call from Fidel. And Fidel, actually that's not his real name, I just called him. He's a guy who does some work for us. 
and a number of other things. And he told me, Craig, you need some help knitting? I'm coming over. Okay, come on. So I go to tell my wife, I say, Fidel's going to come over and help you knit. No, she's not. You're not letting him on here. He's no good. He steals our fruit. He does this. He injures the dog. And she does not like that dog. And you could just watch her and look like I'm just going on. And I'm stroking it here in the video. So anyway, Fidel comes on over, and I have to deal with all this stuff. So he comes over, and we go and we see her. And he says, hey, Fidel, I haven't seen you a long time. How are you doing? And he said, Craig, I just got out of the hospital. I've been in the hospital. Really? What happened? I, my blood pressure, my blood pressure, no good. What, what do you mean? What, what happened? Yeah, I, I had to go to the hospital, my blood pressure, no good. Oh my gosh, this, what happened to the hospital? All right. I said, well, what happened? So he said, well, he explained to me that he stayed in the hospital. And my wife, who hates this guy, she said, well, what, you know, what did you do? What did you take? Because she's been taking blood pressure medicine. Also, you know, to make her blood pressure go down. It doesn't work. So yeah, I got this acid band or something like that, and my blood pressure came down, I'm fine. And you would think that there would be this moment of humanity between, I guess, hospital buddies there who find solace in the vines because the vines don't talk back. But he's her mortal man. And she never, you know, stops talking about it. But for me, it was this moment, you know, that maybe could bring bring these two uh, people together. So I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up because I know the chief, you know, he's, he wants to talk. Um, are there any That's what chiefs do. Of the wine or, or the vineyard? Yes. So your first barrel that you did of that half ton of grapes, how was it? It's good. And let me tell you how long it lasted. It lasted, it lasted less than a year. Because 10% went to church. I'm going to do my own. Probably 20 to 30 percent we gave away to friends. And if you do the math, remember a barrel of wine, 24, 25 cases, 25 cases times 12, 300 bottles, 365 days in a year. A bottle a day, less than a year, is how long a barrel of wine lasts. But half a ton of grapes makes one barrel? That's about rough, more or less, the way that I make wine. You get a little bit left over for topping. But more, more, it's half a time. <laughs> yeah. You own your own crushing equipment and all that, or do you bring that in? Oh, okay. Yeah. And we do have a equipment um, as well. But a lot of this stuff, uh, okay, all of this stuff, <laughs> um, the ones that are here tonight, we do a lot of things by hand. So when we press the wine, by pressing it by hand, we're really going to control that process. If we overpress, we can really kind of control the volume of our product, at least how we produce it. We can't control always what's in the vineyard. That's some of that's beyond us. <coughs> Any more quick questions? Or is that red stuff gonna kill your mess up your harvest this year or what? Oh, uh, I, I don't think so, and it may be a nutrition problem. <coughs> yeah, we need to research a little bit more. And we're all gonna be around here later and we'll answer all your questions. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, great.